configurable, multi-parameter, wireless, wearable, Bible monitor. Um, my name is Shorandi. My name is Shorandi. And my name is Mike. So, in the modern healthcare industry, multi-parameter sensing is becoming increasingly important. <coughs> Doctors rarely monitor only one location's vital signs. Rather, many parameters are monitored continuously at the same time. For example, even in a simple checkup, doctors will take the patient's temperature, heart rate, and blood pressure. <coughs> Wearable devices featuring vital sensing technology have seen rising sales in the past 10 years, and the market only continues to grow as new innovations are developed. Many patients, although they don't need full-time care, do need some sort of continuous vital monitor. The medical devices used in hospitals are large, bulky, and expensive, and hard to move around. Wearable devices featuring medical technology typically lack the accuracy required for a medical diagnosis, and if you use only one or two sensors, limiting the range of parameters that can be extracted. A portable or fully wearable multi-parameter vital monitor would be a great benefit to patients. In addition, many third world countries typically have little to no electricity. Doctors visit patients in their homes rather than patients going to the hospital. The lack of electricity in the patient's home means that sophisticated sensing techniques cannot be used unless they can be powered by a battery. Our objective was to come up with a device that collects two primary physiological signals. One is the electrocardiograph or the ECG or photocystograph and the PPG. We also wanted to collect three primary vitals. One is blood oxygen level, heartbeat from both the ECG data and the PPG data, and the temperature. We also want to come up with two versions of this product. One is the portable version for doctor usage. The other one is the wearable version for, for patient usage. So he, here's our idea. <clears throat> it goes around your neck, includes a PCB, includes three primary sensors. One is the ECG sensor, PPG sensor, accelerometer, and the temperature. Includes an onboard microcontroller, and wireless module, and USB charging, and all that goes into here, and we have three electrodes, here, here, and here. Here we can see the full block diagram of our system. The hardware design is shown on the left hand side, starting with the analog format, including ECG, PPG, temperature, and accelerometer. All these four sensors communicate with the microcontroller through both analog and digital connections. And the system is powered by a battery, and it can be charged through a USB port. All the data are transferred from the microcontroller to the BLE module and then get collected by the mobile phone. Moving to the software side, all the collected data will be uploaded to the cloud and displayed on the website. The first version of the device we designed was intended as an early prototype and proof of concept. The PCB was made intentionally larger than necessary for easier routing, assembly, and debugging. Although this is not a production design, it could also function in a hospital or healthcare setting. Um, an oversized battery was selected to accommodate a full day of nearly continuous sampling. Laser cut acrylic was used for the enclosure as it is cheap and easy to process, and holes cut inside allow physical access to the sensors. A second PCB was designed for the wearable version this PCB is about one-sixth the size of the previous version. It uses a four-layer board to improve, to uh, reduce board area and improve signal integrity. The main design challenge we faced was the area constraint and the small parts that had to be used. The ECG chip, for example, fits 20 pins in a two millimeter by two millimeter package. Chips like these can't be hand soldered and the board was designed with complete manufacture in mind because of this. Um, also, because of the small size of the board, analog and di digital signals are in close proximity, so special attention was given to signal integrity. Now on to the software side. We use MATLAB for uh, processing the ECG data that we collected. So left, we have the uh, ECG data coming in. First, we detrended the signal by fitting a lower order polynomial and subtracting it from the original signal. Next, we use the low pass filter to remove any high frequency noise that's present in the uh, signal pass it to a high pass filter to remove motion artifacts, which is lo lo lower frequencies. We also used a variable uh, peak detection algorithm to detect the R wave. Next, we detected the QRX complex and subsequently the heart rate. <coughs> so here's 
of a software flow. Our software flow depends on two things. One, stability, the other one is time. If the system is stable, uh, the, 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 the system will collect the ECG, PPG, and the temperature data and send it over. Now, if instability is detected during this measurement process, this data is cracked and a new set of measurement is performed. To communicate with our wearable device, we develop an iOS app. All the vital signals will be collected by the mobile phone. As we can see here, the ECG and PPG data are shown in two slots. All the other vital signals, including temperature, heart rate, and oxygen level, is displayed in the middle. Here we can take a closer look of the data that we collected and saved by the mobile phone. To save more memory and the power for the microcontroller, some of the, uh, some of the algorithm are processed in our mobile phone. Now that we get the data, the next step is to upload it and save it into software. So we develop a doctor portal for medical professionals to access patient data anywhere, anytime. As we can see here, all the data that is stored in the database is, collect, is displayed in the table <coughs> with the timestamp. And the corresponding ECG and PPG data are plotted on the right hand side. If necessary, the doctor can also press the download button to download the data and do a further processing. We, we received IRB approval to involve human subjects in our testing. Uh, we, we, bu we bought in five people and we collected their data. So it, here is an analysis on uh, uh, data of one of the patients. So here you have the raw signal. And as you can see, this, this dotted black line here represents the noise level, which is below 0.1. Um, also here you can see the QR is complex identified correctly for each cardiac sample. Um, also mentioned this, this is the Pan Tompkin algorithm. Um, in, in order to verify the accuracy of our product, we, uh, we, 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 we bought in an ECG simulator and we applied heart rate ranging from 50 to 140 and we measured the heart rate with our, our algorithm and for different types of noises including tremor noise, baseline wonder and Gaussian noise. And as you can see, the length is trivial for uh, every, single, uh, every single one of these types and the error is between plus minus 5%. Also to measure the um, accuracy of the blood oxygen level we have, uh, we bought an FDA-approved pulse oximeter, SN10. We collected two fingers of the same person at the same time, one to the SN10, the other to our device, and we collected the blood oxygen level and plotted against each other. Again, you can see a linear trend here be between plus minus 7%. As a summary, a complete medical monitoring link has been developed as our MQP project. This project involves hardware design, software programming, signal processing, as well as mechanical enclosure design for both wearable and portable version. And at the end, we successfully received a US pr provisional patent for this project. A possible next step if this project is continued is to further optimize the design for production. This translates to reducing board area, component cost, and assembly steps. One possible improvement is to embed a discrete microcontroller This eliminates through-hole components, saves space, cost, and power, and allows more control over the signals. Another possible improvement is to replace the linear power supply switch mode converter for longer battery life and to enable easy generation of multiple <coughs> power supply voltages. Other than the hardware, we also wanted to come up with an FDA-approved housing. We wanted to improve upon our doctor portal by adding features like patient login, medical report for individual patients, we also wanted to improve our uh, uh, mobile app by adding features like setting tables. In order to demo our project, we have a small video. The wearable devices in the market today only utilizes a single sensor. For medical professionals to come to a definitive conclusion about your health, they need various physiological signals, including ECG, PPG, and temperature. The electrical engineering team at WPI came up with a solution that packs four most important sensors into one small package that will be integrated into a wearable structure. We came up with an efficient program flow that ensures accurate data collection by means of using an onboard accelerometer 
that detect inactivity to minimize motion artifacts. A reliable wireless link is also developed to transmit the collected information from the patient to medical professionals. We did all this while being power efficient and keeping in mind patient comfort. For the patient benefit and easy usage, we have developed an iOS app that displays the process data in real time. Using various vital extraction algorithms, oxygen level, PPG heart rate, ECG heart rate is calculated and displayed on the mobile device. The phone acts as a node for the data to be uploaded to the cloud where it would be accessible to medical professionals and caregivers. With proper authentication, a medical professional can monitor the data from anywhere in the world and take action if necessary. We also develop for a medical professional or researcher to download this healthcare data from the cloud and using their post-processing technique to do a further analysis and signal processing. We have come up with a fully functional portable solution that doctor can carry around with them. This portable device can be connected to a laptop to record and visualize the patient medical data. Previous technique of vital extraction can be applied to this data as well. WPI has pioneered in healthcare technology for the last two decades. Healthcare is all about saving lives. And this is something we take extremely seriously. We look forward to this project evolve over time to the product that can benefit our society. It's for if you are on the run and it just detects that you are uh, stable, it just goes to the collection and to make sure that you are actually stable, just waste for that uh, 60 seconds. Any other questions? Yes. So for the motion noise in your comparison to the pulse oximeter, yes. was that you were just standing there or have you measured motion noise while you walk around? It was It was just, just standing there. For I would suggest Right. in the past where it worked perfectly laying in the bed, but then everybody was sick when they walked around because they gave false positives. Right. You're going to have to do that. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. So actually, I have this slide up another question. Um, so the, uh, the pulse uh, oxygen <coughs> saturation, what, so I mean, it looks great with the 3%, but isn't it the kind of thing where if it drops to like 95, you've got a real problem? And what's, the, what's the Right, so the, the range is about 96 to 99. Mm -hmm. uh, over 99, it's in inaccurate because you cannot have 100% right. hemoglobin in blood. Below 95, it's inaccurate. You can see all the set of data that we get 97, 99 in that range. And also, these uh, pulse oximeters really depend on the calibration because they, they are dependent on the two LEDs and the glass that, that, that goes on, 
nonprofit. So there's a ratio that, that you calculate from this, and then there's a heuristic kind of algorithm that, that, that goes, goes behind this, going from this R to the blood oxygen level uh, down to like clinical, clinical <coughs> patients. You'll also, in theory, see a change in heart rate if the, uh, the FDO2 does drop too low and it's not detected by the device. Um, and I mean, a doctor would know immediately that it was the FDO2, but they would check with more sophistic, sophisticated equipment if that were a problem. Okay. So the fact that you're getting multiple data streams will allow you to right. probably better value. Right. I think we need to move on.